Well, on to federal politics, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese today made many excuses for why he's had to break his promise to Australian voters. Minister, are you about to break an election promise and change the stage three tax cuts? And if so, why? We know that there are cost of living pressures on middle Australia and we're determined to follow the Treasury advice to provide assistance to them. So when you when you recommitted to seeing through on your promise on tax through um, on stage three the tax cuts, you said my word is my bond. What is your word worth now to Australian voters? My determination and my job is to get the best outcome for Australians. Now this is a significant moment in federal politics. This is the Prime Minister standing in front of Australia trying to worm his way out of a very clear broken promise that he wouldn't touch stage three tax cuts. A promise he made over 100 times, according to the opposition calculations. My word is my bond. People are entitled to have that certainty of the tax cuts that have been legislated. When a politician makes a commitment before an election, they keep it. And I intend to do just that. Uh, what we need as well is to have that certainty. People have made assessments based upon uh, the certainty that comes through legislated tax changes, and we intend to fulfil that. Albanese unequivocally promised you that you could have certainty in your financial affairs, that his word was his bond, his own words. Well, it's lies like this that give all politicians a bad name. And as you heard today, Albanese claimed he was breaking his promise for the good of middle Australia. It's quite a feat to spin a major broken promise as more tax relief. In fact, what they're trying to spin as a cost of living measure amounts to a tax hike. The reality is that one million Australians earning over $150,000 will be worse off. Australians did have a tax cut. It had been legislated. And now they're going to be forced to pay more. For people earning over $200,000, they were set to have a tax cut of $9,000, and that's been reduced to $4,500. For people earning $180,000, they'll be paying $2,218 more than they would have. And for Australians on a wage of $150,000, it's an extra $118. Now, these tax cuts were legislated by Scott Morrison in 2019. They were stage three, meaning the tax cuts for lower income Australians have already gone through and taken effect. And now, after waiting five years for the tax cuts, which are meant to address bracket creep, Albanese will take legislation to the parliament to increase taxes for middle Australians, for average workers. The fact that Labor has cloaked this as a cost of living measure is a farce. While for one million Australians, it's a tax hike, for those who do benefit, it's not gonna come in until next financial year. And most people won't see any benefit, as I understand it, until they do their tax return in around 18 months' time. By then, mid-2025, inflation is expected to be close to returning to the target band of 2 to 3%. Cost of living measures are needed now, not in 18 months' time. The figures are that those earning under $135,000 a year will get an extra $932 a year in tax relief. This amounts to $18 a week. So, this is the big cost of living relief, $18 a week. This is all just political spin, the appearance of doing something on the cost of living to win back voters who've deserted the Prime Minister. And Labor figures that the one million Australians who will now have higher taxes don't vote for them anyway. But Pauline Hansen made the point in an interview with Steve Price earlier this evening that these tax increases aren't hurting the top end of town but ordinary Australians like herself. 
But I'm an ordinary Australian as well, and I've worked hard through my whole life in trying to better myself in saving, going without, and, you know, I was wanting my tax cuts. I rather put the money in my pocket, like many other Australians, I know best how to spend my money, instead of giving to a government who squanders the money all the time and does not spend it wisely. And former Victorian Premier Jeff Kennett went a step further and said that Albanese's lack of leadership, first on defending our National Day, but then his broken promise on tax cuts, means that he should quit as Prime Minister. If the Prime Minister doesn't believe in Australia Day, he ought to stand down. And he ought to stand down, secondly, for what he's potentially going to do tonight, and that is throw out the tax cuts that have been legislated for for a number of years and he went to the polls on. People want leadership. Very strong comments from Jeff Kennett there. Well, the coalition made the point that whatever minimal extra amount people in lower tax brackets will receive as a result of these changes would be lost within a couple of years when their bracket creep kicks in. And this has got nothing to do with trying to deliver something for the Australian people. It's all a self-interested change uh, to, to, uh, to try and deliver a result for him. The election was won on a lie. The election win was based significantly on this lie. And Shadow Treasurer Angus Taylor said that this tax plan is Labor's punishment of people who dare to be aspirational. He made these comments on this program last night. He has declared war on aspiration in this country. And I tell you what, if he's declared war on aspiration, every aspirational Australian should be worried about where he's going and what he's doing. The business community are scathing as well, with the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chief Executive Andrew McKellar saying... The government for, for a long period of time, many, many times, hundreds of times, has said they will implement the stage three tax cuts. Very for, true. Um, for business integrity is important, and if you walk away from doing the things that you say you're going to do, then I think that is uh, not a good thing. Commentators like political writer Joe Kelly at The Australian say that Albanese has chosen to break faith with the Australian people in the biggest political decision of his career. And Joe Kelly makes the point that the Prime Minister's claim to restore integrity and accountability to politics has been exposed as a farce.